Okay, we've got continuing coverage for you today of a pretty significant storm working its way onshore across the bay. We're going to be live with you throughout the duration of the morning, considering the intensity of the rain that is heading our way and how this is likely going to be playing out in terms of potential flooding concerns in the North Bay. But I'm going to show you why this storm, as impressive as it is, might just be doing us in the Bay a little bit of a favor. And we'll get into the details on why I would say that, but the short answer on it is the worst of this storm is going to our north. This is really going to be an issue today and really over the next three days in terms of rainfall through Mendocino County and farther up through the north coast. And the Weather Prediction Center has actually put a bullseye on that part of the coast of California where the highest degree of flooding is. Now, having said that, if you look over my shoulder, look what's going on on the radar. So there's already a pretty decent stream of rain that's gotten directed into Sonoma County. And this now becomes the primary focus and concern for the Bay Area, Sonoma County. In addition to Marin and probably into that northern edge of Napa County. And the reason why I would put the spotlight on that, obviously you could pick that out yourself just by looking at the radar. But what you're not seeing here is how that is about to just get stalled. In other words, what you're seeing on here now is the last three hours of radar. So here we are now, we're just a little bit after eight o'clock. It's 8.04 right now. And you're watching this going all the way back to the five o'clock hour at this point. So what you're seeing is a fairly consistent flow of rain, which has already been coming down for much of Sonoma County, right along 101 and all the communities up and down 101. This is not a significant flood threat for those communities. It's just going to be a lot of rain, several inches. We'll put some numbers on it in a second. But some of the smaller streams, some of the creeks that tend to be a little flashier, and what I mean by that is if you live a little more rural in Sonoma County and you know you've got some of the smaller uncontrolled stream beds or small creeks that tend to rise a little bit faster because they've got very little control features on them, very little flood control, they're not part of the main stem rivers, so they're not as managed, and they're usually going to be fairly rural. And here's the key, in low-lying spots, so that description, if you live near one of them and you've been in Sonoma County for the last several years, you are probably already familiar with that stream or that low spot in the valley, which tends to see some flooding issues on the bigger rain events. That's likely what we'll see from this. It's not going to be a major flood concern for any of the communities. This is not a major urban flood threat with the minor exception of by the time we get to tomorrow, and we've been seeing some fairly steady rain on this, you might have some low-lying intersections in the typical spots that maybe don't drain as well could have some issues. So if that's our live radar of what we're looking at on here in terms of how the rain's been coming down here over the last several hours, let's get a close-up look at that. I'll step out of the view and you get a close-up look at the radar because what I want to do is transition this story and start talking about other aspects from this storm, whether it's wind, which we do also have to talk about as a concern, um, and that becomes a factor for us over the next several days as we progress farther along and get towards um, the afternoon. So a couple of things now. I'd mentioned that there's a bullseye on here. So let's take a look at that for a moment now. And what you see when we view it this way, what you're looking at is the forecast put out by the Weather Prediction Center, which talks about their, their higher level of concern for where they have a degree of confidence that, they are, that we likely will consider some uh, excessive rainfall to where streams and creeks start flowing out of their banks. Let's get a close-up look at that for a second. You see that it's kind of like a blister on there and you're looking north of San Francisco, just zoom in right into San Francisco for a second. Take a look at the color codes on there. You see how it's shaded down into green for the North Bay and then goes into like that fuchsia color. For the part of the coast I was talking about, come back out wide now. There's key on here. So in the areas of green, here's why I said this storm's doing us a favor. There's about a 5% chance, it's a marginal risk that we see some of those streams and creeks overflow their banks. So it's something to watch for, but it's certainly not like we're looking at that bullseye there where the heaviest rain's gonna be. All right, now take a look kind of at the rest of the map on here. You can see what the wind streams are doing. What we've got now in terms of wind across the bay and right off the coast is a pretty strong southerly flow. 
Look at the reds showing up there in the streamlines off the coast. That's where you've got gusts up to around 50 or 60 miles an hour. In fact, the deeper the shade of red, you're looking at wind gusts that do start to approach 60 miles an hour. But that's many miles off the coast in terms of the worst that this wind has to throw our way. So I don't anticipate we're going to experience 60 mile an hour gusts here at home in the Bay Area, even though that wind speed is, is you know, uncomfortably close off the coast like that. What we're going to experience here, come back into the Bay and look at the colors for our wind streams. Those wind streams fall more in line with about a 30 to 40 mile an hour gust. And there is a subtle difference here in direction because you've got southerly winds now and that we're already within the wind advisory here. So we're not getting the worst of this, but we are going to feel strong enough winds here that a 30 to 40 mile an hour gust can have some local impacts. Particularly as we get into the early afternoon, around noon through 3 o'clock, is when some of the stronger winds are going to start to pick up. So at that point, we do have the potential, most likely along the coast and the immediate bay, as these winds shift, they won't be as southerly. They'll be a little more southwesterly by the time we get to that time frame. This is between about noon and 3 o'clock today. And that window is when we're going to see a little bit of a burst in the winds. So we'll go from our 30 mile an hour wind gusts, which we've been seeing so far this morning, and then we're going to see this transition to a little bit more of an onshore, get a little bit stronger. So the bigger uh, item as far as wind is, right in the middle of the day, I think lunchtime, but really noon to 3, uh, that's when the winds pick up to about 40 or 50 miles an hour. That's not terribly impactful here, but it is enough, especially considering that our, the ground's not saturated, we're not overly concerned of downed trees here in the bay, but you could get some broken branches. You could get some flying debris through the neighborhood. So that would be this afternoon. All right, let's come back up here for some totals. So if we looked at this storm on the big picture and we put the Weather Prediction Center's forecast for where they have the bullseye, which is to our north through Mendocino County, primary concern there, direct hit from this atmospheric river. What we've got here in the bay is the southern stream of it, which still brings some pretty impressive rainfall totals. But if we look at this as a whole, and what we've done here is I've taken the accumulated rainfall from today and I've gone through Friday, which is about 75% of what this storm has to throw at us. There's still rain on Saturday, and we'll see that when we get to the seven-day forecast. But the overwhelming majority of rain that this system has for us, it's going to deliver today and tomorrow. And when you look at how this lays out, you're looking at the total rainfall here all the way through Friday night. So this is the first three days of what will be a four-day rainmaker. The rain on Saturday is going to be more spotty, hit and miss showers. So from the concern of how much rain might this system deliver to the bay during those first three days when it matters most, those are your grand totals. So if you take Santa Rosa at just about, just, it's just shy of four inches, and that's, this is the latest high resolution forecast model. The numbers may vary a bit from that, but I think we've got a pretty good degree of confidence in these at this point now that this system has, hasn't really wavered much at all over the last 24 to 36 hours in terms of the forecast model's ability to pin it down. So if we look forward out three days on this, now we've got a much higher degree of confidence on this than we did, say, five days ago when we started raising the awareness that there was likely a significant rain event coming our way. Let's wait for the details. Now when we look out about three days, we've got a pretty high degree of confidence on these numbers. So if you take four inches of rain for Santa Rosa, spread that out over three days, and here's the most important part about this. Put it on a landscape that's not necessarily all that saturated. We really haven't had a whole lot of rain yet. That's why this doesn't become a significant flood threat here at home in the Bay. If a storm like this had happened, let's say in mid-January, after what had been several months of just average storms, then we might have some concerns. And so timing on these things is everything. The fact that it's coming in fairly early in the season and it's falling on a landscape that can absorb it because it's, this is really the first notable storm of the entire winter. That's why that number, which would look concerning in another winter if we were in the middle of it, is not as concerning now. Uh, look at the rest of the bay. Look at the pattern. San Jose at this point stands to see maybe a third of an inch over the entire three-day period. So this is going to be a very different experience from one side of the bay to the other.
San Francisco kind of splits the difference there with perhaps about two inches spread out over three days. Rainy in the city, wet streets, at times maybe some low-lying intersections could have some issues as you're driving around, but that's totally manageable. But in terms of coming away with a snapshot image, this is kind of like we've stepped forward in time and we're looking back on Friday at, okay, how'd the rain go, where did it fall? you instantly get the visual of how atmospheric rivers can affect Northern California. Look at that long stream out there. It's kind of like a stationary hose that gets pointed at one part of the coast and then sits there for a particular period of time. In this case, it's gonna be three days. Uh, some of these can come through much faster. But when we rate atmospheric rivers, one of the important components to rating them on that scale from one to five, this is a three on a scale from one to five, one of the important components on that is how long does it stall out? That gets factored in with, well, how much water vapor does it have to work with? How much rain can it deliver to any one point at any one given time? And that's where you're just reading the amount of water vapor in these things, which is also important. But it's the two things put together that determine how impactful these things will be when it's all said and done. And those two things are how much rain is it bringing and how long will it stall out over that given location that we're putting that number on. So for the North Bay, for, for Santa Rosa, for much of Sonoma County, this is a three on five, this turns into like a five once you get up along that far northwest coast, or at least a very strong four. And I'm talking about like Mendocino County and Arcata. There will be some flooding concerns up there for some of the more rural streams, even if the landscape hasn't had much. And they actually have had more rain up there so far this winter. We probably hadn't noticed it so much down here, but Mendocino and um, up through Del Norte County, they'd had plenty of rain so far. All right, so that might be one snapshot image. I'm going to um, take a step out for one moment, go ahead and get your bearings on that and counter it with the wind. And what we want to do is uh, kind of put this into a seven-day forecast, if we can, to show you how this is going to play in terms of duration. And we will get a little bit of a break as we get through the end of this. There's one last thing that I'd like to do, if we can, before we get into that long range forecast. And I'm gonna switch this up to the big picture satellite now. And what you're seeing is the last three hours of, of satellite imagery on here. And there are a couple of really impressive looking features that show up when you look at this storm as a whole. First of all, no doubt what you're seeing on there and what you're noticing is the tightly wound center of circulation. That, if you've been hearing any of the words that have been used in the media to describe this storm, that is the bomb cyclone. And you've heard this explained many times on the news over the course of the last 24 to 48 hours as we've been describing what the storm is. The bomb cyclone is a particularly intense center of low pressure. Sounds a lot more ominous than it needs to. It is a legitimate scientific term that's been um, in the vocabulary for the meteorological community for decades, going back to at least 1980. And even before that, the word bombogenesis had always been used in like every basic meteorology class to describe areas of low pressure that intensify rapidly in 24 hours. We couldn't really show that to you a day and a half ago. It wasn't even really there. And now it's probably one of the most impressive centers of low pressure we're likely going to see off the coast of California all winter long. That is so beautifully developed. And it is particularly intense. It's not a direct concern here in the Bay. If you were near that, it would be a big concern. If that thing had come on shore in the Pacific Northwest or down here, there are 70 mile, 80 mile an hour winds wrapped up in the middle of that. And then you are talking about wind speeds that are comparable to very uh, low categorical strength hurricanes. That's sustained winds at 70 to 80. You are getting into hurricane force winds at that point. So bomb cyclones can be super concerning, but you have to get right into the middle of it. That's not our concern. It's just an interesting item to this, and it says a lot about the intensity of the storm as a whole. What we're concerned about is this. Look at the long stream of clouds. That's the atmospheric river. And what I want to do is visualize this um, to separate the two, because you're hearing both terms about this storm. You're hearing bomb cyclone, and you're hearing atmospheric river. And those two can be somewhat confusing. Well, what part are we getting exactly? And what do we need to care about in terms of impacts here? 
So get a close up look at that. I'm going to step off again. And what we're going to do is we're going to visualize that storm in terms of breaking these two apart. And hopefully what you're about to see here when I hit this button and we advance from just looking at regular satellite to water vapor, the area of low pressure spinning off the coast, that is the bomb cyclone. Now look within it. Look at that concentrated plume of water vapor down there that's getting pulled up our way. That is the atmospheric river. Two very distinctly different components of what is effectively the same storm, but this storm is so large in terms of latitude, in terms of the, how much it covers from north to south, we're never going to experience the bomb cyclone at all. Instead, the reason why we're about to get rain for three days is because the plume of that atmospheric river will be pointed pretty much directly at northernmost California with its southern edge over the north part of the bay. We'll be tracking this all morning. We'll have uh, more details and updates on specifics coming up in our next visit, and, and we'll be back with that shortly.